Welcome everyone. I'm Nancy Eichner, president of the Library Trustees, and I just want to welcome you all to our 2021 annual meeting. And oh, what a year this has been. <laughs> we will have a brief business meeting, and then we're very excited to present our featured speaker, local author, Martha Hunt Handler. Um, so first I'd like to ask trustee and secretary of the board, Alina Dunn, to read last year's minutes for your approval. Thank you, Nancy. This is the exciting part of the meeting, everybody. Um, okay, annual meeting from January 26, 2020. The treasurer's report. The library's financial performance was better than projected for 2019 and was able to significantly close the gap between the tax funding provided and the financial requirements of the library. Closing the gap was accomplished with the generous donations from the townspeople, local vendors, the library fair, and other fundraising events, including evening entertainment. But the operation of the library and the extensive programs offered to the community of Lewisboro resulted in an underfunding of approximately $15,000. President's report. Nancy Eichner thanked the library staff and our community for all their efforts. Nancy discussed the three points for the five-year plan going forward. First, to communicate and highlight the fact that the library is the beating heart of the community and so much more than a place to borrow books and media. Second, to begin the process of sharpening our, our financial strategy. Third, to build bridges of cooperation between the Katona Lewisboro School District and the Lewisboro Library. Nancy recognized three retirees of the board and thanked them for their years of service. Director's report. Cindy, Cindy explained that in March 2019, the Westchester Li Library System migrated our integrated software system and catalog to evergreen open software. In striving to be the heart of the community, the library partnered with many groups, including the Lewisboro Land Trust, the Town of Lewisboro, the Girl Scouts, parent teacher organizations, the Lewisboro Garden Club, and John Jay High School musical groups and robotics clubs, and many more. We offered 482 programs with 8,616 attendees. This is a 5% increase over last year. Our children's and teen librarians continue to do a wonderful job with our youth programs. Our technology coordinator is doing a great job organizing and teaching tech classes. And Cindy also thanked the board president and all the library board of trustees and our wonderful volunteers. Nominating committee. Jen Kea thanked the outgoing board members. Jay Luzzi had been nominated to fill the vacancy of vice president, and this will be presented to the board at the next meeting. We are introduced to three nominees, Andrew Tedder, Melissa Lesavange, and Peter Rose to fill vacated slots on the board, and the trustees were unanimously approved. And that's, that was last year. Thank you, Elena. In addition to serving as a trustee and secretary of the board, Elena also is our chair of fundraising committee. So she wears many hats. Um, next, I'd like to welcome Jennifer Kaye, our head of nominating, who will be proposing a new candidate for us and reporting on the nominating committee. Thank you, Nancy. Due to the ongoing global pandemic, 2020 proved to be a challenging year. But despite its challenges, the library board has been able to maintain its 12 member status. The nominating committee is fortunate to continue its mission of appointing a dedicated, diverse, and hardworking library board. We are pleased to announce the following appointments and nominations. Nancy Eichner will continue as board president and Jay Lutzi will continue as vice president into his third term on the board. Elena Dunn will continue as secretary and Kevin Fitzmartin will continue to serve as treasurer. For the class of 2021, the nominating committee is presenting a slate of two candidates, Priscilla Lukow and Ver Veronica McElraith. Priscilla Lukow is a longtime resident of South Salem and joined the library board mid-year in 2020. Priscilla re recently retired from the KLSD school district where she taught more than 800 children over the course of 22 years. Last spring, Priscilla spearheaded the highly successful historic Hamlet hunt, so her addition to the board has made an immediate impact. Veronica McElraith resides in South Salem and has lived in Lewisboro for three years with her husband and two-year-old daughter. She has extensive experience in networking, marketing, and building strong community ties. 
Veronica's legal background and knowledge will further aid the mission of our library. And finally, we would like to congratulate outgoing board member Rich Sclaren on his election to the Lewisboro Town Board. Rich has been a dedicated and hardworking member of the library board for two terms, and we know that his commitment to serving our community will serve him well in his new leadership role. We have been honored to see Rich at work and know the town board is lucky to have him. To the members of the board and all others here today, I move that Priscilla Lukow and Veronica McElraith be appointed trustees of the Lewisboro Library Board for the class of 2021. Do I have a second? Yes. Kevin, all right. Um, all in favor of approving uh, Veronica and Priscilla as new trustees of the Library Board, please raise your hand, give us a thumbs up. Anyone opposed? No, motion carries. <laughs> Welcome to Priscilla and Veronica. I know you'll do great things as members of the board. Jennifer, you always manage to bring us the best candidates and I thank you and the committee. Um, I neglected Nancy. to oh. motion for approval of the minutes. Uh, may I have a motion to approve uh, the um, uh, minutes as read? Anybody want to motion that? Okay, sure. Peter, Rose, thank you. Do I have a second? Jen? All in favor of approving the minutes as read, say aye. aye, raise your hand or thumbs up. Anyone opposed? No, motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, next up is a financial update from our board treasurer, Kevin Fitzmartin. Kevin has done extraordinary work in streamlining our financial reporting and supervising our financial investments. He works closely with our accountant and bookkeeper his duties also include talking me off the ledge when I get panicky with market gyrations. Kevin, thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. Okay, uh, I'm gonna discuss the uh, 2020 financials in a uh, capsule form. Uh, the financial performance of the library exceeded expectations in 2020. Although a very difficult year for the operation of the library, the year ended in a positive net funding of 35,000. Um, I'll discuss the uh, chart up there shortly. Despite the pandemic, the net positive funding was a result of very generous donations by library supporters. The PPP funding, which is the Federal Paycheck Protection Plan in the amount of $88,000, increased town funding of 17,000 and state grants of 13,000 over last year. Uh, operating expenses, exceeded uh, 2019 by 34,000. These increases were principally attributed to salaries and wages, uh, insurance costs, and approximately $6,000 related to ensuring the library was COVID-19 compliant for visitors and employees. The salaries and benefits line item also reflect the correction of a pension funding era attributed to prior years. All other expenses were lower, such as operating costs as uh, utility expenses, custodial, and program-related costs. Or they were basically unchanged from last year. The positive net funding that we experienced this year was accomplished even though the library fair was canceled. The fair helps close the gap between the town funding and the operational requirements of the library. Looking at the statement that's on the screen, the left side, you'll see a summary of the operation showing the receipts and disbursements for 2020 resulting in a net funding of almost 30, $35,743 that's highlighted in yellow. It's just netting those two numbers out. On the right side is pretty much funds that are earmarked for capital work, uh, uh, such as replacement of, uh, a furnace or a roof or repairs with the library. Uh, this is all really normal. The intent is long-term in nature. Some of this money has been invested with UBS in a conservative fund. And this year, those funds increased by $34,000, mainly as a result of conservative investments with UBS. But keep in mind that reflects market conditions. The, door, the drawdown in funds is attributed to the purchased COVID-19 equipment and technology equipment. 
overall, compared to prior years, the library has ended 2020 in a favorable financial position. This has not happened since 2014. We can contribute this to the generosity of the donors and the emergency <laughs> federal funding. Going forward, this increased positive net funding will be fully utilized by the library for the benefit of its users. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions? Anything for Kevin? No, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. That is excellent financial news, and we do appreciate it. Um, and now please welcome our extraordinary library director, Cindy Rubino, who has met every challenge this year with grace and perseverance while managing a tremendous turnover in several key staff positions and dealing with ever-changing COVID regulations. Cindy. Thank you for your kind words, Nancy. Uh, well, of course, for everyone, 2020 was a challenging year, but the library stepped up to support our community as best we can. Hang on, I'm letting somebody else in the meeting. Um, while making safety a priority for the staff and our patrons. We installed glass or plexiglass shields, moved furniture, and implemented social distancing and extra cleaning to provide a safe environment for all. The staff pivoted to serving patrons with curbside pickup. We first offered curbside pickup with our famous tent on the front lawn, but unfortunately that did not survive the first bad storm. Um, so without missing a beat, we continue to operate out of the foyer for curbside pickup since then. We had 3,299 curbside pickups since June, June to December. Uh, in addition to curbside pickup in July, we started offering um, scheduled appointments for browsing, children's room, computer usage, and study appointments. Unfortunately, as of the day after Thanksgiving, we reverted to curbside pickup only due to the increased virus positivity rate in Westchester County, and we remain on curbside only um, for the moment. We hope to open up to in-person visits by appointment again in the next few weeks if the positivity rate continues to go down in Westchester County and in our own town of Lewisboro. The staff use their creativity and ingenuity to provide children's, teens, and adult programs virtually via Zoom or Facebook Live. We also held a few um, programs in person outside. Sorry, letting somebody else in. Um, in the summertime, utilizing social distancing. Liz Gabriel, our program co coordinator, has been very successful in booking virtual programs jointly with other libraries to share the costs of the presenters, which has worked very well for us. Regular programs such as Storytime, Teen Advisory Committee, Lewisboro Senior Book Club, and Knitting and Crocheting Club continue to meet on a weekly or monthly basis. Altogether, this past year, we held 130 in-person programs. That was in January to March and outside in the summer and the fall with 1,973 attendees. We had 270 virtual programs with 4,638 attendees. I'm not even mentioning the number of views, which number in the thousands after the programs took place. Um, so people did continue to view them afterwards, which was very gratifying. Um, our biggest change this year was sadly the departure of our wonderful dynamic duo youth services team of children's librarian Anna Moser and Dolores Antonetz, our teen librarian. Uh, Anna moved to the Midwest to take up the head of youth services department of a large public library and teen librarian Dolores Antonetz, um, who has retired and we were very sorry to lose them. However, we're um, happy to announce our new children's librarian is Marie Nanya, and our new teen librarian is Jane Rothschild. Both are creative and very enthusiastic about their new roles here at the library. Um, they are serving our patrons with virtual programs and look forward to meeting everyone in person as soon as that can happen. Circulation figures, which I per are preliminary until we receive more detailed data from the Westchester Library System. How however, we can tentatively report that there was approximately a 27.3 drop in total circulation tra uh, transactions from 103,092 in 2019 to 74,869 
in 2020. I must emphasize that this will improve when we receive the further data from WLS. It is understandable, however, considering uh, the amount of time we were closed during the shutdown. Obviously, there was no borrowing of print materials in March and April, only digital. So that leads me to say it's also very interesting that our digital usage went up tremendously this year, especially during the shutdown of March and April when we couldn't loan print materials. In 2020, the division between digital and print borrowing was 53.4 digital and 47.6 print. In 2019, digital was only 21.7% and 78.3 print. So you can see the tremendous difference. It was approximately 50-50 this year and it was much different from last year. It will be interesting to see whether that will continue when things get back to normal. I want to thank the entire staff who worked so hard to continue serving our community during this difficult year. Um, the board for their support and thank you to everyone who contributed to the library. The board's fundraising efforts and um, donors to the library uh, really make such a difference for us. And I do, I know Nancy will mention this, but we were also very lucky to get the Small Business um, uh, Administration PPP loan this year, which really kept us going um, during the summer, especially when the town uh, reduced our funding temporarily. Um, we are applying for the second draw PPP and hopefully that will carry us through uh, 2021. So again, thank you so much to my wonderful team at the library, to the board, and everyone who supports us. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. I, I can't emphasize enough how much the $88,000 PPP grant meant to the financial stability of this institution. Cindy plowed through enormous red tape and refused to give up on securing both the funds and full forgiveness of the loan for the library. I'd, I'd like to recognize her uh, and our outstanding library staff with a round of applause, thumbs up, whatever oh, you thank choose you. to. Thank, thank you. you, Cindy. And if, really I, if I may add also, I was very gratified that that alone um, enabled us to keep everyone employed. And that was the most important thing. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, if you'll indulge me, I'll take a brief moment to update you uh, with the president's report. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge the contribution of our trustees, all volunteers who give their time and talents so generously in so many ways to our library. Um, in 35 years of volunteering in this community, I have never worked with a finer group than our trustees. Uh, as we've alluded to this year was certainly full of challenges, which the trustees met with grit, determination, and, and mostly good humor. Uh, we were forced to briefly furlough our staff, something we never had dreamed would be necessary, but thanks to the PPP, as Cindy mentioned, we quickly hired everyone back and have kept full employment. We battled weather to install and reinstall curbside tents for our patrons use. Uh, we operated for months on a no contact vestibule only pickup basis. And we learned the value of virtual meetings and programs and how effective they could be. The financial challenges this year were enormous as Kevin uh, alluded to. The town understandably needed to delay some of our funding uh, during the summer months when reserves are traditionally at their lowest. The cancellation of our September library fair cost us more than $40,000 in anticipated funding. And our in-person concerts, plays, and comedy clubs also fell victim to COVID restrictions. We had no choice but to get really creative and imaginative. In September, as mentioned, we held the historic Hamlet hunt which was a self-guided driving tour through many of the historic sites in Lewisboro with scenic stops, small prizes for children, a, a rich, well-researched booklet describing the significance of these local landmarks. And I wish to thank town historian Maureen Cole and new trustee Priscilla Lukow for their significant contribution to the event. It was a sellout hit. Uh, it got families learning together outside of their home uh, and ended with a socially distanced celebration, including a treasure chest raffle. 
We also tried to create new twists on traditional fundraisers, uh, spearheaded by Elena Dunn and Baker's extraordinaire, Amy Raffle and Allison Edgar. We hosted a library pop-up bakery during the holiday time period. It is definitely not your grandma's bake sale. Uh, it featured limited editions of gourmet baked goods like peppermint bark cake and chocolate tart available through our website. The only trouble we had is that the goods sold out within the first hour. We literally could not keep these goodies in stock. We are also now hosting a Facebook edition of our fabulous attic treasure sale from the library fair where residents can post used or, but, slight, but still usable treasures for sale with all proceeds benefiting the library. So check that out on Facebook. And I wanna thank volunteer Karen John who organized this. We are currently preparing and sponsoring a virtual Valentine's Day wine tasting event featuring wines from the Salem Winery presented in a library gift tote full of romantic surprises and sweet and savory goodies. There are still a few places left at our virtual wine tasting, but they are selling very quickly. So I'd like you to invite you to sign up on our website and enjoy some local wines, a wine talk by uh, Vintner John Vuolo, and you can find out all of the details on our website, but they are going quickly. Apart from our fundraising events, we do depend on our loyal patrons and donors who were especially generous this year and responded to our needs and really rose to our challenge. Led by trustee Linda Wolf, we redoubled our outreach uh, to our dedicated benefactors and tried to communicate how much their generous gifts meant and how vital they are in keeping the library functioning, especially in this challenging year. Although each and every donor uh, is most appreciated, today I would like to recognize our angel donors of the year, Clyde and Diane Brownstone and the Brownstone Foundation. They have been loyal patrons and supporters of the library for many years and are always willing to share their love of books and a kind word with patrons and staff alike. They recognize the importance of reading, especially in the lives of young children, and their large gift this year will fund media acquisition, author events, programs, technology classes for people of all ages. Uh, we are blessed to have benefactors like the Brownstone supporting us please join me in recognizing them and showing our appreciation. And if they are present, I'd like them to be acknowledged if we can see them. Thank you. Thank you, Diane and Clyde. Thank you, Diane. Here I, she is. Do you want to yes. Thank, you. Thank you. We're happy to be able to do it. You made a most amazing contribution and we are blessed to have you. Thank you, Diane. Good. Thank you. I wanted to next take a moment to acknowledge and thank our board vice president, Jay Luzzi and his building and grounds committee. His team's thankless tasks include keeping our buildings and grounds safe and in tip top shape, uh, refreshing our beautiful plantings and beds, repairing our walkway, cataloging plantings for the many people who ask about our lovely garden, and I want to also thank member Priscilla Lucal for designing and installing the plaque identifying our magnificent sculpture, Sun, Sun Trap, by South Salem artist, the late Axel Horn that graces the library's front, front lawn. Do check that out. Um, if you haven't appreciated it, you can see the plaque and we are so glad that it now has a name and a sculptor <laughs> designated. Next is the hard part for me. I, I also want to thank and acknowledge retiring trustee Richard Sklarin. He has served uh, honorably on our board for the past five years. Besides serving as the head of our personnel committee, Rich also worked on nominating and worked hard on the library fair for the past several years. He was always willing to share his legal expertise with us. He has moved just across the walkway to the townhouse as an elected member of the town board, as Jennifer mentioned, 
we congratulate him and wish him well. Thank you, Rich, for everything. And we do have a small token of our appreciation for you. So you'll be getting that very shortly. Um, now it is my privilege to introduce our featured speaker. Okay, um, hey, I don't know if she's here? arrived yet. <laughs> oh, <dear>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna email her. Okay, does anyone have any questions for the board, for me, for Cindy? Is there anybody who has anything they'd like to uh, ask about, highlight? No, okay, then we will wait for our speaker. I promised you a brief meeting and I think it was a little too brief. <laughs> oh, Maureen has a question. Hello, Maureen, yes. I, no, I have a commercial. Good. <laughs> uh, on the 21st, Sunday, the 21st of February, I'll be doing a Zoom history of the library. So um, I just thought if anybody wants to tune in on Sunday, four o'clock, same time, same place, uh, and learn the history of the, of the South Salem Lewisboro Library. That's all, hope to see some of the same faces there in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Maureen. I'm looking forward to your talk. And we thank you for, again, your contributions to the historic Hamlet Hunt. Uh, and we look forward to more programming for you. If you ever have a chance to check out Maureen's ghost tour around Halloween, it is a fabulous event. And my family has enjoyed it very much over the years. So thank you, Maureen.